At Five Star Bank, community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. In a global economy, a community's competitiveness is king. Without a competitive edge and a plan to maximize it, cities are left behind. The Sacramento Metro Chamber of Commerce conducts a study mission each year that brings area leaders to other regions to bring back the best ideas in pursuit of advancing prosperity in our own backyard. Philadelphia was this year's focus, and three participants are with us to share their discoveries and to talk about what we can learn. Joining us today are Christine Alt, Project Manager for the Next Economy, Tim Murphy, Director of Corporate Responsibility for Aerojet Rocketdyne, and Dr. Sandra Kirscherman, Executive Director and Associate Vice Provost of Drexel University, Sacramento. So, why Philadelphia? You know, that's funny, it's a, it's a question that we got uh, for a while as we were leading into this trip and a lot of people thought that Philadelphia was uh, too big of a city or not like enough to Sacramento. Typically the study mission has gone to a city that's been more on par in terms of population or you know it's a government town or it has a rail yards or whatever things that you know are a li little bit more similar but you know we're in the midst of a next economy strategic plan trying to grow our economy trying to identify ways that Sacramento can catapult our div our diverse clusters remind us all what next economy is next economy is a region wide regional economic agenda to to set a common platform for economic development so that the entire region can become competitive in a global marketplace Okay. It's defined five key goals that the whole region is to pursue in concert with each other. All right. And Dr. Kirschman, this Drexel's mothership, its main campus, is in Philadelphia. Our home campus has been in and, Philadelphia for 122 years. Right. And so this really is kind of a, uh, this was kind of a special trip in connecting Sac Drexel, Sacramento, back to Philadelphia. It really what is was. It, what is it that... Uh, we were hoping to accomplish in making that connection? Well, you know, we have such a great opportunity to grow an anchor institution, a privately funded university here. And seeing Drexel University's home campus gave us all an organic sense of how great this institution is. Give us, uh, give us a, a, just sort of a primer on the difference between private universities and public universities because uh, I'm not sure that I completely understand the distinction myself. There's at least three things that make privately funded institutions different. One of them is their agility and their ability without the constraints of so much government intervention to do research and to bring it to the public and to do use-inspired research that's very grounded in reality in the here and now. Second is our ability to focus and connect to private funds, especially foundation money. And third, and I will say the most important, is the ability to connect for a lifetime, not only to employers in the region so that we're close to industry, but to all of our alumni, all of our students, all of our board of advisors members. We can mobilize an enormous group of people and they're bonded to us forever. Well, talking about mobilizing uh, an enormous group of people, Tim, there is CFOs across this region, when you talk about things like study missions or things like that, that the Metro Chamber puts on, in, most people think boondoggle. This is a junket, like a congressional junket, to take a trip and go live it up for a couple of days. Answer the cynic. This is the farthest thing from that, Scott. What these trips accomplish, this is there our region's greatest example of civic leadership in action. This is the opportunity to bring together very diverse interests, but all opinion leaders within their areas. So you've got private business, you've got the nonprofit sector, and you've got local governments. Sending representatives to another community that has had similar challenges in many cases, and look at where they've had their successes. This isn't a boondoggle or a waste of taxpayer money. It's an investment in making the Sacramento region a yeah, greater but, place to you know, live. How, did, how does that serve Aerojet Rocketdyne's shareholders by 
someone like you going back to Philadelphia and spending a couple days back there? We're a large employer in this region and we care about the quality of life that our employees have. We ask a lot of our employees when they're uh, at our site doing the work to defend our country and make this nation's access to space greater. But we also care about the quality of schools that our kids have, the quality of life in the communities. Are our governments operating efficiently? What type of civic and cultural amenities do we have to attract people to work in this community? This is all part about cor corporations that send representatives on these programs are doing it because they care about making this region a better place for their employees to live. And so, Christine, what did we learn? What, what did we learn? Well, you know, I, I gotta say we learned a lot. You know, you asked me about why Philadelphia. Um, it's about dressing for the job you want, not the job you have. And <laughs> really? we're, we're trying to grow our community into something world class. Um, a lot of people dispel world class. They say Sacramento is a very tight knit community. It's very quality of life, which of course it is all those things. And I'm not suggesting that world class is about size, but it's about attitude. And one of the things that we took away from Philadelphia was that their leadership just had an attitude about what they were going to accomplish, how they were going to accomplish it, and, and, and an unfettered commitment to making things happen. Now, there are many examples of that, but really the bottom line is they had an attitude to well, get things well, done. Well, well share, share with us one. I mean, you, when I think of Philadelphia, I'm glad that no one from the city is actually with us today. I think of about 25 years ago, uh, this cult group called MOVE burned down a, a set of row houses and intractable sort of ethnic divisions and poverty and things like that. Mm -hmm. What's happened since then? Because Philadelphia was considered to be a bit of a basket case. So I have a story for you that can help illustrate that. Um, the uh, city officials won out for an Olympic bid for 2016 and they thought that they had every part of that bid locked in. They had the infrastructure, they had the mobility, they had the audience, they had the um, the size of the community, everything that they needed and they were confident that they were going to win that bid and that they didn't. And they were told by the Olympic Committee that they didn't win it because nobody in the world really knew who Philadelphia was. They had, wow. no, they had no image, they had no, they had no identity. That sounds a bit like Sacramento, doesn't it? <laughs> it does sound like Sacramento and the other thing about Philadelphia that's consistent with Sacramento is that they sit in the shadow of three larger metropolitan areas that steal the spotlight and steal the investment and the jobs and the attention. And, and Philadelphia took that into a learning lesson and they said, we don't have an image. First of all, they were shocked. And then they decided, well, that they were gonna make it happen. They were gonna invest in looking at who they were, what was the soul of their community, what was unique about them that separated them from DC, Boston, and, and the other communities that were um, you know, much more famous. And they put, an, essentially a branding identity together, but it was very organic. It wasn't something that was orchestrated per se. It had a thought process behind it, but they told us it was owned by all and supported, owned, owned by none, owned by owned none, by none supported by and all. supported by what, all. What does that mean? That means that it ground, it's up from the ground. It means that everybody buys into the notion of who the city is and it must be authentic. Mm -hmm. We can't take a brand and create it from somebody's studio and say, this is Sacramento. It has to be from who we are, organically coming up from everybody in the region. And that supported by all and owned by none is something that I think we really could learn. So, so owned by all, uh, supported by all, owned okay. by none, mm -hmm. How does that play in a region that's known for sort of its, its political correctness and sort of balkanized silos of leadership? Well, this is the challenge that we have, Scott, is that we need to get these leaders or to develop emerging leaders to say, that's a model that's old and broken, we're not going to follow that. One of the things that we saw in Philadelphia that really resonated with me is that the leadership, all the leaders that we met, and we met people who were champions of, of government, industry, nonprofit, all the way across, they all seemed to be singing off of the same songbook without, from one session to another, without any coordination between them. I believe that what they have found is when they face the crisis that Christine spoke about, about Philly being a world-class city in their own minds but not being recognized by anybody, anybody else as being such, they determined to make the change that, that we saw in many, many forms that we had over the three days that we were in the city. So folks, describe to me five things 
that, that you saw in Philadelphia that you want back here in Sacramento? Oh, let me start. <laughs> okay, let's go, Dr. Pershing. You know, I just had a conversation with Willie Duncan this morning, the president of Sierra College. And in this same supported by all and owned by none conversation, Willie came to the table this morning because he had watched what we were talking about with an innovation neighborhood in Philadelphia. What does that mean? A concept where an institution, and a university in this case, buys property behind the rail yards and develops it not just for the university's use, but for entrepreneurs' use, innovators' use, shared use, people who want to create new ideas and new products, bringing technology transfer to the table. Willie looked at that and thought, we can do that in Roseville, and Sierra College can be the anchor of that. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant to see a community college president come back from this mission and take that and embrace that and say, this is where we're headed. Okay, what else? Campus Philly was another thing that we saw that we were just completely blown away by. Uh, Philadelphia has over 100 degree-granting institutions, and they realized that, that education was their greatest export. People were coming to Philadelphia to be educated and then leaving to go pursue jobs elsewhere. 100 degree granting institutions. How many do, does anybody know how many we have uh, in roughly Sacramento? 40, 43, 40. something like okay. that. Okay, all right, go ahead. So people would, students would come to Philadelphia, take advantage of the great educational institutions that they have there, Drexel, Penn, Temple, and then they would leave the community. So what Campus Philly does is that they work to uh, embrace this to, to blanket the students with all the opportunities that Philadelphia has the cultural the recreational uh, historical internships and, internships uh, they, they do so much and what they've managed to do is that Philadelphia now retains I think it's around 60 percent of the people who come to college in the city and graduate from there they stay in Philadelphia because they appreciate the cultural the civic the lifestyle of many amenities that are offered. Their, their goal is to ingrain the, the students into the community before they leave. Right. Create a relationship between the students and the city. Do we do that here? We don't, but we are going to. And, and that's we're starting an outcome. it already. It's starting already. We had a meeting yesterday to talk about how we can create some similar program and, and, and participate with all of our educational institutions. What makes that region sticky so that, pe so that those graduates want There to is a dynamic nature to Philadelphia that has learned a long time ago that when you graduate from college, you're coming from a culture where you were surrounded by your friends and colleagues in a very warm, nurturing environment. You leave college in ordinary circumstances and you leave that behind. What Philadelphia has done is it's found this way through Campus Philly to make people step up to the next step of their own maturation, still surrounded by friends and nurturing relationships relationships, now ju not just from your Drexel graduates, but from your Temple graduates, your Penn graduates, your UC Davis graduates, your CSU. So all of these folks are now coalescing around many dynamic things that the city has to offer. The students will say to you, there's always something to do, and there's always somebody to do it with. And because they have this wonderful infrastructure and easy transit ability, they have a real a real step up here because it's easy for people to get everywhere as well. Yeah, and you know, real, oh, I'm sorry. A real comparison that we can also draw is that Philadelphia has a much more affordable uh, quality of life or lifestyle that a student after they've graduated can accomplish as opposed to going to another, another, another one of the East Coast, more, uh, you know, New York, uh, Washington, D.C. The analog would be our San Francisco. Right. Exactly. Right. So there's a much more affordable quality of life. They are enjoying a higher quality of life by living there. And then uh, Philadelphia has also been regarded as one of, uh, I think, the top cultural destination in the, uh, in the United States. So they have all types of arts, sport opportunities. There's, there's a whole variety of, of opportunities for Aren't those great, things that we don't want to pay for, though, in this region? Well, I, I want to add a point that I think is an important point that um, students or young people are drawn to community before job mm -hmm. today. The job comes secondary. They will look for the job they want after they have the quality of life e that they seek. Explain that, because I don't understand that. It used to be that when you graduate from college, you seek a job, and if that job happens to be in Buffalo or Bakersfield, then you go to that place. Yeah. Now young people are saying quality of life is more important, and I can get a job anywhere. And since the job landscape is changing into something that's much more innovative and entrepreneurial, and commuting oriented, they have the ability to be more flexible about where they... Really? Absolutely. So and what Philadelphia has figured out is that if they build the place that young people want, then they will have, then they will stay. 
Cynics might call that the field of dreams strategy. Well, but it's, but working it's working because Philadelphia, they have managed in their, their Navy yards, their redevelopment, which would be like our rail yard opportunity here in Sacramento. There are o over 100 new companies that have located within that area, many of them from outside of the Philadelphia metro area. It's because it's where the young professionals are located now. Philadelphia has managed to, to retain their college educated talent, and in doing so, companies are coming there because that's where the talent's located. And in 10 years of redeveloping the Navy Yard, 70 businesses on that site today, 70% of the companies there are new to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Really? 70%. Yes. Really. How, how does Philadelphia deal with that historic issue that, that I spoke to a few minutes ago about the sort wide disparities between incomes, education, ethnicities, things like that? Is this Philadelphia experiment inclusive where it is that uh, everybody is sharing in this prosperity or is it just this sector of young professionals and others that are really benefiting from all of this activity and I ask that because one of the questions that comes up when we talk about how our own region is transforming is how to make sure that everyone benefits from future prosperity mm -hmm. not just the few. I think there's no doubt but Philadelphia has its own problems every city does it has pockets of poverty. Its education system needs work. There are other things we could, examples we could cite. But to give you some examples of what Philadelphia is doing together with its civic leadership, it's, it's looking at tax incentives. It's saying if you renovate this, this group of housing buildings, we're gonna give you a 10-year tax abatement strategy. It's gonna take you that long to get that revenue stream started. The university's investing in an extension center that's helping people in pockets of poverty learn how to manage their own financial resources, learn how to manage their diabetes, learn how to get their kids to the right schools. So there are individuals that are investing in their neighborhoods and this strategy we were talking about a few minutes ago where I don't want to be part of the problem, I want to be part of the solution. Each of those neighborhoods is starting to stand up for itself to say, we're going to lead the charge here because this is where we live. Christine, is there a common theme? You all have been doing this, going on these study admissions for over 15 years, mm -hmm. right? Is there a common theme in what is found, not necessarily specific to Philadelphia, mm -hmm. that are ingredients that we are missing here? I'm not going to say necessarily that we're missing, but the answer is yes. Uh, leadership. It comes down to leadership. What are you talking about? We have 120 elected officials in the legislature, yes. mayors, city councils, boards of supervisors, special district heads. <clears throat> it would seem like we have an overabundance well, of leaders. Well, I'm going to refer to local leadership. We'll leave the state. That's a separate issue because we're looking at our region. Regions mm -hmm. are the economic engines. So in terms of the Sacramento region, we have very committed, passionate leadership. We're not always working together, though. What we've seen in Philadelphia and Denver and New Orleans and, and plenty of cities um, also on the study mission is that the, the pivot of that, that community's changeover from something not so great into something great had to do with strong mayoral and, and region-wide mayoral leadership with a common agenda. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Tim, <sighs> You're, you're the for-profit private sector guy with a big publicly traded company. Where, I mean, what is the, the, the answer on leadership? Where do we stand? I think what we need to have, Scott, is that we need to have leadership that recognizes that, their, that somebody else's success is not their failure. Um, to use a cliche, a rising tide lifts all boats. <laughs> and because, as Christine said, because regions are the economic engine, we need to be working together across jurisdictional lines, because commerce knows no jurisdictional boundary. We need to be working across these, these politically jurisdictional lines in order to, to work together to leverage our advantages where we have them, to build up advantages where we don't, and, and work together so we can compete against Los Angeles, the Silicon Valley, San Francisco, San Diego. Government mentality town is the common criticism and loaded with political correctness. How do we cut through all of this and, and get to the solution? Well, I'll, I'll tell you a story about that. Uh, one of the things that we saw when we were touring some of the neighborhoods in Philadelphia, there's an area called North Third Street. Uh, the locals there call it Nerd Street, N3RD, North Third. 
And there's a, a gentleman there who operates a co-working establishment called Indie Hall. And this is where entrepreneurs come together and they leverage each other's talents and strengths with, with one another to build and develop business. And he has something tattooed on his arm, something which has kind of become kind of a, a catchphrase or a takeaway for us. He's got that tattooed on his arm and he gave us a bunch of stickers. What does that mean? Well, uh, JDI means just do it, and I'll leave you to guess what the F might stand for. Hmm. But, but this is something that has really resonated with the folks that have come back from the study mission. And as Christine said, there have been a number of areas where we've had people who have taken the initiative to begin conversations and dialogues about these opportunities that we saw in Philadelphia about what we can have here in Sacramento. So I think leadership across our region, if they were to look at this and think, you know what? Sometimes somebody's just got to stick their neck out and get something started. Maybe others will follow. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what is it? Let, let's turn this around a little bit. What is it in going back to Philadelphia from the experience? Did you say, wow, we have it all over Philadelphia, but we're just not maximizing this or we're, we're, we are sort of not recognizing or appreciating the opportunity we've got. Anything like that come yes, up? Yes, I'm gonna go back to the North Third Street example. We did a, a mini tour. We had uh, the CVB there set up a tour for us where we visited three different startups. CVB. The Convention and Visitors Bureau right. of Philadelphia mm -hmm. arranged a, a two hour walking tour of a number of different business sites and the co-working space at Indy Hall was one of them. We had uh, someone on our trip uh, that heads up our hacker lab and when we came back she said to me, we have that here. It's a really cool thing what's happening on the grid and in Midtown. But w and, and, and we're cool. What's happening here is amazing. We need to do a tech and innovation tour so that our own community can understand how cool we really are. And I think that that's a really poignant example of we have all of the ingredients. Philadelphia was fabulous. I had a great time. I would love it to go there again. But we have all that they have except for maybe the common thread and 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 the and the 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 com joint commitment to make it happen and i'm just going to throw out next economy here again because i think that next economy is the platform and the the framework for actually allowing us to be not philadelphia not silicon valley but the best sacramento that we can be wow philadelphia was looking at what next economy could be for us 15 years down the line that's how I Did see it. Did they have any specific advice? Oh, yeah. Dr. Kirschman, in terms of what, what mm -hmm. and they said, you all really need to do this. They told us exactly what Tim said a minute ago. Your success is not my failure. Mm -hmm. That what they learned some years ago, and you know, this is the birthplace of American democracy. This is where the forefathers came together and wrote a constitution. They know something about collaboration, don't they? And they have put that to really good use in the last 15 years. I think that competitive bid for the Olympics that made them realize they had been siloed, just like you were describing, Christine, that we can be siloed. I think they realized that collaboration was so key to their development. So let me, mm -hmm. so let me throw something back at you on that. Some would say that we've had our moment, and unlike Philadelphia, we've been successful. The region's outpouring and galvanized effort in success on the arena mm -hmm. in in terms of maintaining the kings here and fighting back the billionaires some would say that that is an is an experience like never before here in Sacramento how do we pivot to use your word pivot off of that experience it's a great question and use that and i think we have seen a renaissance i think we're in the middle of a renaissance and we don't know it yet i think we do know it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we saw in Philadelphia some of the tools that they've used in their own renaissance to move forward. And that was what was so exciting. And I think it was this everybody takes leadership. It's, a, it's not, a, not a single individual. Leadership is important and that's to put that strategic direction on the table that you're talking about, Christine. Mm -hmm. Next economy is that strategic framework. Once we have that framework, let's all of us work on that framework. Let's not say, gee, it's Tim's job. Gee, it's Scott's job. I don't have to step up. We need to step I up. I think it's important mm -hmm. to point out that John Fry, the president of Drexel University, 
yeah. when talking about Philadelphia's economic development and what they've done over the last 15 years. They didn't put together a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan. They put together a lifelong plan. It's a forever plan. It's mm -hmm. a forever plan. We, we have accomplished great things here in our region. You know, Blueprint was something that put Sacramento on the map when it comes to, to land use. The arena accomplishment, it's fantastic. It's, it's going to be galvan it's galvanizing our city and it's moving us in the right direction. But we can't just say, well, we did that. It's time to go home. We have to keep going. We have to build, build, build. That we this is this is the, the machine that, that violates the laws of, of physics. We want to create something that is that is a perpetual motion machine that will never stop. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, each of you, I just ask for, for one thought. If we could take something we learned from Philadelphia and implement it in the, in the next 24 months very quickly, what would it be? In my mind, it truly would be the innovation neighborhood. It truly would be bringing industry, the university, civic leadership together and fueling this kind of discussion that we were talking about at Indy Hall or at Hacker Lab, creativity. All right. Tim? Mm -hmm. I was impressed by Campus Philly and the efforts to retain and to grow their young professional community. Okay, and very quickly, Christine. Not one thing, attitude. I, I, it's not one thing that I think we need to learn. It's about changing our attitude. All right. Thank you all. Well, that's our show. Thanks to our guests, and thanks to you for watching Studio Sacramento. I'm Scott Syfax. See you next time right here on KVIE. At Five Star Bank, community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. All episodes of Studio Sacramento, along with other KVIE programs, are available to watch online at kvie.org video.